Right, so I'm here in Griffith Park testing the X-T5 for some landscape photography and my dog decided to take a poop right here on the walking path. So um, I'm going to clean that up and then we're going to head to the helipad which is up a hill here and I'm going to test out pixel shift versus manual panoramas versus um, how the X-T5 fares as landscapes. Uh, right now I'm doing this I'm, as well as testing the vlogging. Right now I'm vlogging on this. We're at um, F-Log2. 4K HQ H265 and we're gonna see how it works even though I can't see the screen I'm just gonna it's in shutter priority and I'm just gonna walk around like this and see how it works also have another angle here on the XH2S uh, it's got an ND filter on it so it might look a little bit better and we're gonna do some b-roll on the way up the mountain so enjoy this montage and then we'll get into how the X-T5 works versus the X-T4 and some landscape stuff Alright, so made it up to the hill. We're on a bench here underneath the shade tree to relax for a minute and this is the Griffith Park helipad. See we got the uh, observatory over here, some buildings of West LA, the Pacific Ocean, the Med City, and then through the trees here. This will make a good photo. We've got downtown LA. Okay, so now I'm at the Griffith Park helipad and uh, I'm on a tripod with the X-T5 and I'm going to test out pixel shift versus a handheld or I guess manual panorama. So right now you can see on my screen I'm zoomed in on the Griffith Park or the Griffith Observatory. I don't know if you can see the screen there. Uh, and so for the first shot I'm going to do a pixel shift and then for the second one I'm going to go and do a panorama where I adjust the ball head and I slightly do nine shots, three, three, and three, and then I merge them all in Lightroom. And we're gonna see which one has more megapixels. I'm assuming it's gonna be the panorama because I'm covering more area as I turn. Um, but also I'm gonna see which one has the better image quality. Pixel shift is, is relatively new and it is very, very touchy. Uh, so even the slightest movements, like I'm probably gonna to have to sit on this bench right now to keep it stable. And even that, the slightest movement will probably uh, show little bits of fuzziness in the image. So um, we're gonna test that now and just see how it goes. Okay, so I just done, got done with the pixel shift and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a manual panorama where I don't move very much, but just, I'm gonna kinda of go to the left of the observatory slightly. See how I'm just moving barely? And then down, across this way, down again, across this way. Very, very subtle movements. Um, I'm gonna tighten this up just a little bit and I'm gonna keep it level for all series of three across the top, middle, and the bottom. And we're gonna see how that works versus the pixel shift. Hey everybody, I just wanted to show you, interject real quick and show you pixel shift versus manual panorama versus enhanced and Lightroom. So we're going to take a quick look. You can see I've, I've combined a, a couple here already. For those of you that don't know how to use pixel shift combiner, it's a free software. You can download it um, from Fujifilm's website. It's really easy. You just pick the first file name. You might be able to find it in, in Lightroom in this case. The first one here was 655 and then this job was 722. I will show you both of these here in just a second, but um, if you need help with this software, there's plenty of YouTube videos. I just wanted to quickly show you the difference between a couple of the things that I'm going to do here. So first, I'm gonna show you the actual pixel shifts that happened here of the observatory. Like a 
and find it. So the first one today, yeah, this one here. Nope, that's the wrong software. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open this up in preview real quick. This was, I, I just, I'm gonna show you. Not really gonna get into editing or anything just yet. Um, but this looks like crap. Now, why? I have my tripod on a bench, that's why. There's micro movements and there's people moving. And you can obviously see if you zoom in here, like, yeah, see the ghost effects of people moving across the frame. Um, and then just the whole thing is not aligned properly. That's because my, my tripod moved. And so you have to be very careful, even though the tripod was stable on a bench and one single frame would look great, it is very sensitive when the pixel shift is running. Now I'll show you another one real quick that I took of downtown LA that actually came out really nice. Remember to open this preview real quick. Yeah, so I'm not edited this yet. It's just the edges still look a little weird if you can see right here, right here. Um, but this is roughly 150 megapixels and you can see quite a bit of detail zooming in with not a whole lot of noise. Now, this one worked a lot better than the observatory and this was uh, on a tripod on the concrete helipad looking towards downtown. And you can still, if you're a pixel peeper, you can definitely still see where it didn't align every single frame properly or it didn't demosaic. Now this is like a thousand percent. so. Um, I don't think anyone's really going to notice that, but do keep that in mind if you're running prints because this stuff will kind of matter. You will be able to see it in a print depending on the size that you're printing it. Uh, but I'm pretty impressed. I mean, it, it, it's okay. If, if you really want to crop in a little bit, maybe drop it down to 100 megapixels, then you've got quite a bit of detail and a lot of dynamic range. This is a very editable photo. Um, and just to show you here how big it is, we can see it's 589 megabytes and it is 154 by 100 15,000 by 10,000 pixels which is about 150 megapixels and you can add four here and three here then you're, you're close to 160 as advertised so let me just real quick show you one that i did manually in lightroom so you can see how that compares so here i did one i believe starting right here maybe it's right here three six nine yeah so it starts right there and not a lot of people know this but you can actually stitch together stuff it doesn't have to be a linear panorama you can actually just go like this and then merge it do photo merge as panorama and it figures everything out for you um like so and i wouldn't recommend doing this for every photo like some of them you know this is where i didn't match up the frame properly while i was moving the ball head um but this is pretty easy to clone so in this case you know normally i would just kind of like crop in maybe like right here give it like a 16 by 9 or something but in this case because the sky and these trees are really pretty easy to clone i'm just going to boundary warp it to fill it um and kind of just turn yes yeah, yeah it, it fills it in a little bit but then it also turns adjusts and crops it on its own and then you can just click merge it'll add a merge job up here and now this won't be 160 megapixels, but it'll be more than 40 um, because it also demosaics. So if where it overlaps, it takes what it thinks is the best or what should have been there and lets that show through other than the rest of them. So it just kind of glues it together, essentially increasing the resolution by increasing um, the image size by adding stuff to the outer boundaries, upper, lower and sides. And not a lot of people that I've talked to know that you could actually do that in in Lightroom. They, they think when they think panorama, they think that it has to be a straight line from one to the other. It does not. This is nine shots, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now you have a much bigger photograph. And here we go in at 100%. And you can see it, it looked a lot better than the initial pixel shift image, which I'll throw up here so you can see it. And then, um, uh, uh, this is crazy, but a lot, I'm going to export this. I think I already exported it actually. Um, there should be one here somewhere. If not, I'll just re-export it. 
Yeah, I think this is one of them, maybe. Let me know. All right, let me, let me re-export it anyway. Um, if you're not happy with this, hey, oh, it was 694, whatever. Just override it. Okay, there we go. Looks pretty good, huh? Now let's do it. So we've got almost 10,000 by 6,000 pixels. So that's what, 60? Yeah, about 60 megapixels, maybe a little bit more, 62 or so megapixels, 61. Uh, and if you're really not happy with that, like if you want it to be bigger, this is something else I've talked to a lot of people that didn't know that this existed. And this is um, something that a lot of cameras will do in camera these days. There's other stuff that like drones will do and iPhones will do is a little bit different. They actually subdivide the physical pixels into what they call virtual pixels to make more details, given each virtual pixel its own detail to increase the resolution. Um, Anyway, th th you can look up videos on it. I'm not going to get into it now, but uh, a lot of times when you shoot with the camera, it's not actually what it's advertised. So a lot of the drones, they say 48 megapixels. It's not really. They're 12, but they're doing virtual pixels. Um, they're, they're subdividing one pixel into four. And there's other ways of doing that, like binning. Binning is a little bit different. If you bin the two by two, it increases the resolution as well. But that's a lot of what drones are doing. They're actually using 12 megapixel cameras and then doing the virtual pixels by dividing one into four and giving each one its own raw data. And that increases the resolution. Uh, this, what I'm gonna do is a little bit different, but it does work. It works pretty well. And there are other things like Topaz Labs, uh, Gigapixel AI that can help. But what you can do here is you can click enhance. Now this is a raw. Now this this will say applicable to only Bayer and Xtrans raw files. Well, DNG is a raw file, but it's not raw straight out of camera. So all it's going to do is just double the image resolution. So we already have 61 megapixels. So we're just going to enhance this, let it run the job up here, and we're going to see how big it is and, and if it looks really any different. Zooming in at 100 and 400 percent. And, and this will save you a lot of time. So if you don't have a camera that has pixel shift in it, you could use this as an alternative, you know, just make a big old panorama and stitch it together and then run the enhance on it. So here we go, pano enhanced DNG. So this is gonna be a little bit bigger and you can see it is a little wormy, but this is, this is kind of normal. Um, it, it just depends on what you're using. Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI does a lot better job um, the enhanced feature in Lightroom, it works. I mean, you can see it's pretty, it's, it's okay. Some of this is haze from the environment. Some of it is just uh, Lightroom guessing with its AI algorithms what this is actually supposed to look like. Uh, and, and this is really only if you wanna make it a mega huge print, but let's export this real quick and see how big it is. So if you take your time and actually get a real good, you know, maybe you focus manually, or something like that to make sure that your image is super, super sharp. There's also software for that. Even Lightroom can enhance the sharpness a little bit. And then um, you go and enhance it. You, you actually have a pretty sharp double image, you know, double resolution image, which is larger than a lot of the others. So um, yeah, th this is a great alternative to something like that. Should you not have pixel shift or if pixel shift just really doesn't work for you, maybe you're not in a studio, you wanna do landscapes and there's just too many environmental vibrations, this could be a good option. Now, this is taking a while and it, and it usually does because the image is, is quite big, so you can see it just finished. And we'll take a look here, where are we at, right here, and see how big this one is before I open it. Um, 20 by 12, so that that's actually quite large. Um, it's is it bigger? It is bigger. It, it's bigger than the um, the pixel shift. So this is 20 by 12, which is what, a little over 200 megapixels. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's let's take a look at it real quick. Okay. There's fully rendered. Now we can just zoom in, and you should see that sort of wormy look that we saw in Lightroom. But you know, this is pretty much at 400 percent right now. I zoom out to 100%. I just realized you probably can't see what I see on the screen, so you don't know if this is, if you can't see it say 100%, but um, it looks okay. There's some stuff that I would clean up in here and maybe enhance the sharpening 
a little bit, but given how large the image actually is, I could work with it. So anyway, that's all I had to show you for today, guys. Um, sorry to interject, but I just wanted to show pixel shift versus non-pixel shift. Okay, I'm back down at the bottom of the hill, getting ready to go home. The dog had fun, I had fun, and we'll see when we get back, but I'm pretty sure that I can actually vlog on this camera. So it should make a good camera for me to just do vlogs when I'm out doing photo stuff. So if I want to go take this camera with me and say, hey, I'm going to this spot, here's the location, you know, basically my run of the mill vlogs over photo locations and settings like that. I should be able to use it and still be able to get really good, um, you know, photographs, pixel shift, panoramas, whatever, 40 megapixels, lots of detail in these landscapes, these different places that I go, as well as, I haven't tried it yet, but the next video, stay tuned for that, will be me doing some street photography. So I will probably do an intro like this vlogging with the camera, but I probably won't do a lot of video with the camera itself. I will probably put my action cam in the hot shoe, walk around and show how I capture some uh, street photos, probably out on Melrose. Maybe I'll do one tomorrow or something like that. Uh, I've done some really great ones with the X-H2S, which is 26 megapixels. So let's see how much detail we can capture with this 40 megapixel X-T5. And then um, we'll just compare the two and Maybe after a couple weeks, we can see that this is going to be a good sort of daily driver, I guess, so to speak. And then I can leave my X-H2S at home for the video projects. Uh, even though it is a hybrid camera, we'll see. Uh, because if this doesn't fare too well, or if I just feel like it's not that big of a difference between this and the X-H2S, I will probably either return this or sell it. And put the money money towards getting another xh2s so anyway thanks for tuning in and i'll see you guys next time